الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters when the Almighty has prohibited something at times we are tested by that thing dangling in front of us, so accessible, it's right within our reach. There's a reason for that. Allah says, when you stay away for our sake, we're going to grant you contentment. You will be a happy person. When Allah's prohibited things, there gets to a point when you shall be tested regarding that thing. Do you really believe in Allah? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something very interesting in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Do you know during ihram, ihram meaning the condition we get into in order to fulfill the minor or major pilgrimage. During that time, we're not allowed to hunt. So Allah says, hunting is prohibited. That's a test from Allah. He could have said it's allowed. He could have said it's not allowed. He decided to say it's not allowed. We believe that that is the ruling. So Allah says, while you're, while you're in that condition, we're going to send a few beautiful hunting animals in front of you. It's amazing how Allah says this. He says, in order to test you, if you really are conscious of Allah in the unseen, no one's watching, do you still follow the rule? People are watching, do you still follow the rule? You're in the condition you're not supposed to be doing something that is otherwise permissible, do you still follow the rule? Just because it is accessible, do you just break the rule? This rule applies to everything that the Almighty has laid down in terms of law and in terms of do's and don'ts. So my brothers and sisters, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 94 of this beautiful surah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يبلونكم الله بشيء من الصيد تناله أيديكم ورماحكم ليعلم الله من يخافه بالغيب. Oh, you who believe, we will test you. We will test you with some of the hunting animals being accessible, being at reach of your spears and arrows, in order to know whether you actually are conscious of Allah even while no one is looking or in the unseen. So my brothers and sisters, let's tell ourselves, let's, uh, let's remind ourselves of this beautiful uh, teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to achieve contentment. Do you know what? When Allah has prohibited something, consider it prohibited. Even if it is easy for you to do, don't do it and see the contentment that you will achieve by uh, being conscious of Allah and pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, be conscious of yourself. Be worried about yourself more than you are of others. One of the biggest problems and one of the reasons why we lose contentment is we tend to focus on the lives of others. Don't do that. Focus on your own life. Remember, if you want contentment, stop focusing on the lives of others. Focus on yourself. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Verse number 105 of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dalla idha ahtadaytum. O you who believe, concentrate on yourselves. What others are doing will not harm you if you yourself are rightly guided. Amazing, amazing. Imagine we're looking for contentment in the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We lose sleep over what Allah has given someone else. We concentrate on others, their good points, their weak points. We are so upset because of what's happening in their lives. Stop it. If you really want contentment, you must make sure that you are concentrating on yourself. How's my relationship with Allah? Look at what Allah's given me. He's given me so many things without me asking Him. Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to only give you what you asked for, many of us would be blind. The reason is we haven't asked Allah for eyes. He just gave them to us. We haven't asked Allah for ears and noses and the, the, the good function of it. It's only when things get taken away from us that we become conscious of what Allah has given us. So let's become conscious of it even before it is taken away. In fact, inshallah, it won't be taken away. But you will achieve contentment. You will look at what Allah has given you and you realize it's priceless. Subhanallah. 
The problem is, like I said, we concentrate on others and therefore we lose sleep. Let's move on to Surah Al-An'am. In Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so many things. Verse number 52, He tells us to respect all those who are trying to earn the pleasure of Allah as well, whether they're rich or they're poor, whether they're black or white, no matter what color they are, no matter what ethnicity, etc. I could add, no matter what nationality they are, what part of the globe they come from, subhanAllah. Allah, Allah tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَا تَطُرُدِ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَهَ Amazing. Don't chase away those who are calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. Seeking the pleasure of Allah. There is a reason of revelation for this particular verse. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during his time, yes, there were a few poor people who had accepted Islam. And because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reminded to say these are VIPs, these are very important people, they could be poor, they could be dark in complexion, they could be from anywhere on the globe, that doesn't make them people who are not worth the mercy of Allah. They are actually close to Allah trying to earn the pleasure of Allah. How many of us are racist? If you'd like contentment, cut it out. Cut it out. Don't ever judge people based on their complexion. If you want contentment, do not judge people based on their race or complexion. If you do that, contentment will be snatched away from you by the one who's given those people that contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We need to revisit this whole topic. We need to talk about it more often. Each one of us should look into our hearts and tell ourselves, do I discriminate? If I do, what type of contentment do I want? The Creator who made me, made them. Perhaps they are closer to Allah than I am, than you are. My brothers and sisters, that's not good enough. We must make sure we cut it out. We must make sure that we actually earn the pleasure of Allah by treating people fairly, with respect, by not chasing them away simply because we think this person's a beggar, this person's you know, cheap, this person's this and that, with derogatory terms. Don't do that. You never know in the eyes of Allah how close they may be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we chase them away. This is why Allah instructs us and He warns us in this regard. And the Prophet ﷺ was told in a few verses later, verse number 54 of Surah Al-An'am, وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ when the people who believe come to you, greet them with a beautiful greeting, no matter who they are, no matter what complexion they are, no matter what color they are, no matter what standing they have in society and community, all that becomes irrelevant. The fact that they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you treat them equally, subhanallah. You treat them absolutely equally and you greet them with that beautiful greeting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written mercy upon himself. He has made mercy one of his qualities. Tell them that. Give them hope in the mercy of Allah. If you want contentment, don't doom people. Don't doom people. If you'd like contentment, give people hope. Give them hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah's written mercy for Himself. Tell them, remind them. And remember, if they were to turn Allah and be hopeful in the mercy of Allah, you would achieve a lot. Beginning with the contentment, the smile. Imagine people leave bad habits because you gave them hope in the mercy of Allah. You're going to have a good night's sleep, mashallah. You're going to be smiling all on your own. People might not know why you're, why you're smiling, but you know, Allah knows. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and contentment. So remember, when we see people who believe, yes, we greet them with assalamu alaikum. When, when there are disbelievers, when there are others, you may want to have a greeting that may not be assalamu alaikum, but perhaps some other greeting. Remember one thing. If you were to greet a non-Muslim with assalamu alaikum, at times you may offend the person. I know of people who've been offended because their friends might think, oh, this person just reverted to Islam and they perhaps haven't. So Allah tells us, you greet with the greeting assalamu alaikum, greet the believers with that greeting. Others 
may be offended by it. And who knows? We ask Allah to guide them, to grant them goodness. It doesn't mean we're discriminating, but it does mean we're taking into consideration what people uh, would actually be affected by in a negative way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and help us to reach out to humanity at large with goodness, with kindness, in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us and them the guidance that we are so much searching for and the contentment that we would like. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us something so powerful. You know when people are sitting and discriminating, when people are saying something bad, when they are speaking evil, when they are actually engaged in the displeasure of Allah, Allah tells us, don't sit with them, don't be from amongst them. If you're not going to be able to remind them and if you're not going to be able to talk to them and if you're not going to be able to help them out of the bad that they're engaged in while sitting in a group, then you better walk away. If you want contentment, don't be a part of it. Express your protest. You protested and you walked away. And this is why Allah says in verse number 68 of Surah Al-An'am, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُوضُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ Beautiful verse. When you see those who are engaged in sin or who are speaking bad about the verses of Allah or Allah or the deen or anything to do with what Allah has instructed us, when you see them engaging in all of that, then walk away from them, turn away from them until they change their speech to something that is different from what they were engaging in. If you are to sit with them, you become like them. If you are to agree with them, if you are to actually not show the protest, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously tells us, you would lose contentment because you become a part of them. May Allah protect us and grant us the strength to be able to walk away when something bad is happening if we cannot correct them. But to start off with, we should try to correct them. We should try to rectify them, remind them, tell them, look, don't speak about this. Don't engage in this. You walk away until they change and until they speak that which is respectable, respectful, that which is filled with goodness and kindness. We shouldn't be a party to those who are engaging in that which earns the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us contentment and goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Al-lazheena amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikri allahi ala bi dhikri allahi tatma'innu al-qulub.